huge deal here. We actually talked about this uh, last podcast. I talked about like, oh, what if uh, Devontae Adams holds out and, and won't play? And we were just like, ah, oh, you know, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. No, he got traded to the Raiders. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and the best thing about this, and I know I'm not telling you anything, is what a double middle finger to Aaron Rodgers this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like the guy totally deserves it. Oh yeah. Like I don't, Absolutely. I don't feel sorry for him at all. <laughs> Not at all. I love the details coming out that the Packers were offering more money. Yeah. And, they offered more money. And he was like, no, uh, it's his lifelong dream to play with the Raiders. AKA fuck you, Aaron Rodgers. I, I want out. I, I know you also, it's his college teammate with Derek yeah. Carr. So there's part of that too. Even, but- even if it truly is, a motivation that's coming from like, I really wanted to go to this place as opposed to, I hate this place. It's still just like totally leaves Rogers holding the bag, but it's like, so what the, you know, I'm going to fight for my 50 million a year. Yeah. Yep. Hold the bag. Like yeah, you've earned this now. Whatever. That's what you get. See you later. Exactly. I, I, I love it. Obviously from makes the um, AFC West, even more exciting. It, it, I, those games are going to be just shootout bonanzas. And I cannot wait. Uh, so real life wise, I love it for all the reasons you mentioned the double middle finger to Aaron Rodgers. That division gets that much more competitive. Awesome stuff. Fantasy wise, it's tough to say that Adams could get any better than what his situation no, was. No, no. Not going to see what he was averaging over 11 targets per game. Uh, we talked about this last time. The fact that he's been a top 12 wide receiver for over half of his games, 53% of his games across the last two seasons, 30 games, averaging 20 four fantasy points per game nearly it's not going to be that good him and no but he's joined but he is he is now going to be part of a better receiving core than he was in in absolutely like by far that's that's a dangerous dangerous set of guys in uh, 100 and should that you know as a team they're going to be very dangerous and Derek Carr big upgrade Adams himself I bumped down to wide receiver four I still think even in a you know more mouths to feed type of offense he's just so talented and the fact that McTaniels goes out and gets the best receiver in the game, like his first year away from Belichick, you know, I, I lean more to the comparisons where they're like, it's Randy Moss 2.0. Like they're going out, getting the best guy in his prime and let's see what he does. I don't think we're going to get 27 touchdowns or anything like that, but it's not a huge no, downgrade. It's a downgrade. Wide receiver one and wide receiver two these last two seasons. I don't expect that, but I do think top five wide receivers. How could you rank a receiver of Adams caliber any lower than that, even with more mouths to feed? So Derek Carr, huge upgrade, uh, plus five in terms of the quarterback rankings, up to quarterback 12 or 13. I forget where exactly, uh, but QB1, definitely a QB1 with these type of weapons, with McDaniels coming in and likely to engineer a very pass-happy attack with these moves. I think that's a huge win for him getting his college teammate back. He's always talked about trying to get back with Adams. It does hurt Renfro and, and Waller. I mean, you have a new number one on the totem pole no matter what, but – I think some people are over exaggerating just how I don't how big. think it's going to hurt them that much, man. I think there'll be enough volume. I really do. I think they're going to chuck this thing. And in that case, I do think Adams, I mean, uh, Derek Carr, is going to have a monster season. And Renfro is going to be one on one all the time. Wallen oh, yeah. probably is too. I mean, it, you, it's. I don't think it's going to kill them. I don't think so either. There is a, an interesting stat I saw the games without Waller last year. We're, we're pretty stark. So with Waller, he averaged Hunter Renfro seven targets. Uh, or seven targets, five and a half catches, and 42.8 yards. That's not great. And without Waller, 8.3 targets, 7.2 receptions, 83 and a half yards, and a ton of a whole lot more touchdowns in those games as well. I think that there was a, a ton of validity to like this was kind of his breakout too. And once he broke out, like I don't think you're shoving him back into the box now. And it was a matter of, you know, Waller's back and suddenly he's gonna disappear. Now I think you know. We saw Carr hype up Renfro as one of the best receivers in the league, one of the sneaky best athletes at getting separation, getting releases. And we saw that all last year when he was facing the number one corners down the stretch. He was doing this. So now, as you mentioned, single coverage, probably the the third the tertiary coverage option. And he's playing what McDaniels already said. This is my slot receiver. This is my next great slot receiver. And before 2020, where we had you new know, Cam Newton fiasco and all that, Patriots slot receivers have been on pace for at least 140 targets, a 24% market share in all 12 of 12 seasons with Josh McDaniels uh, calling plays. They also finished top 12 in PPR points per game in nine of 12 seasons and ranked outside top 20 just one time in 12 seasons. That's a pretty big track record. And again, you know, that's data right there. 
that's some pretty de- <laughs> decent data. And that included when Randy Moss came over. Welker was still top seven in PPR points per game. Of course, a missing part of this equation, the GOAT himself, Tom Brady. Like, yes, we have to factor that in. But Carr, when he's had weapons, I mean, you remember the season with Crabtree and Cooper? You were I, calling the MVP of the league. <laughs> I, I still contend that he was. And I feel like when he finally got hurt and we saw a Raiders team that was, what, maybe number two in the AFC? Yeah. Became became like, you know, overnight one of the worst teams in football. Yeah. I mean, he was he was great. Carr's a good quarterback. He he was woefully underrated. Then I think he became a little overrated. Now I think he's under. Then he was underrated again, and now I think people have come around and we're kind of correctly rating him. And I think people just think, yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's a pretty good quarterback. Absolutely. He's not. He's not the Tom Brady that was throwing to Randy Moss for twenty-seven touchdowns. That, no, that's not. Uh, that's not cool. Derek Carr. But he's good. No, a hundred percent. He's not probably Tom the Brady, worst. But... Quarter, I mean, he's the worst quarterback in this division, probably. But... I, which is insane. He's the best worst. <laughs> yeah, he'd be quarterback. the. He'd be the best quarterback. I want. We should. If we had more time, I would go through them all and be like, how many divisions would this guy be the best right. quarterback in? I'll, I'll bet and, a couple. I know. Seriously. <laughs> At least number two and, and pretty much any of like, it, Yeah, it, it's going to be a, such a fun division. Um, but yeah, I, I think there'll be enough volume. I think it's going to be pretty heavily concentrated to those three weapons plus a running back. So I, I don't think there's going to be any type of third, you know, Zay Jones is not there anymore, but like Brian Edwards, right? There's nobody else to talk about there anymore uh, beyond them. I do think it does help out Jacobs in the sense that similar to. Yeah, it's a similar deal. To, Chubb, oh, okay. It's just, yeah, wider lanes and more scoring opportunities. Uh, more room to your roam underneath. And we know how much the Patriots have peppered their running back. So I do think Jacobs, this is all good news for him. Even if it's a little bit of a target share ding, the quality of the volume goes up. Looking quickly at the Packers now, it's got, how does this not hurt Rodgers dramatically? I mean, who's his number one receiver going to be? I, I don't think they're on the roster now, but if it was MVS. Alan Lazard, MVS isn't even on the team right now. He's a free agent. They're, they're hoping. Well, maybe, maybe they back. scramble to bring him back now because all, <laughs> Maybe all of a sudden it's just like, wow, like we, we need somebody. A hundred percent. And you know, they'll use, I got two words for you. Antonio Brown. I, I speculated that whether it's Beckham Brown, uh, you know, any of those guys could be top 15 fantasy receivers. It's, it's become among the, if not the biggest storyline to now monitor the rest of this, this off season is who is going to be his number one. Cause yeah, Lazard gets a bump up, but he's going to be the number two. There's no way somebody else, whether it's a rookie, whether it is a play on Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, uh, you know, one of those style receivers. But Odell Beckham, you might not have back till, you know, Julio. Remember. Anyways, so uh, that would be crazy. I would love to see it, um, but I, I'm not expecting that. So Terrell Alan Lazard does get a little bit of a bump up. He, he'll probably be the clear number two coming into this year. Rodgers himself, though, big downgrade. Given that they've ranked 16th, 24th, and 15th in pass attempts the last three seasons since LaFleur took over there. It's been just a high efficiency. Rodgers has been incredibly efficient, throwing it mostly to Adams. When you take that type of, I, I should have calculated ahead of the, the the pod today, but how much of his touchdowns have been Adams? How much of his yards have been Adams these last couple of years? I, it's got to be a good like thirty percent of his total fantasy production at least has gone to Devonte Adams. Never mind what happens with coverage once you take a weapon like that off the field. It could be a pretty easy to shut down passing attack if they don't make some significant moves, and there's really not that many moves left out there. So I, I bumped Rodgers down to 16. That's where he ranked three seasons ago, his first year under LaFleur uh, with again, the 16th most pass attempts. I think that's pretty fair. If not, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't really want anything to do with Rodgers unless I know more about his receiving core. The last player though is Aaron Jones. This is an interesting boost. Uh, bigger than I would have expected without in the last three years, he's got seven games without um, Devonte Adams <laughs> He averages, he goes from 16.4 points per game to 25.9 points per game without Devontae Adams. I, I mean, it's just such a stark five receptions compared to three receptions per game, uh, a half receiving touchdown per game compared to 0.18. He becomes like the main vein of the passing attack in the games that Adams has been hurt and missed these last few years. So I, I could see him having a huge stock up. Everybody's been pretty down on Aaron Jones because, yeah, Dylan. He's come in. He's played really well. He's going to certainly take a lot of that early down work. But as a receiver, there could be plenty of situations where Dylan's in the backfield and Aaron Jones is now splitting out wide because he is by far their most dangerous pass catcher at this point. He has been these last couple of years. Um, I get almost 10 points more per game without Adams on the field these last three years. That's enormous. And I think Aaron Jones is somebody that nobody's really talking about right now. 
Uh, he's going around like late third. <laughs> I, it blows my mind. He's going to be a huge value for, for anybody who scoops him there. I agree. The Packers, uh, you know, they're hurt a little bit overall. Rodgers hurt. But one thing we know, as long as they can just sneak into the playoffs, Rodgers will take care of things in the playoffs. <laughs> And sneak, um, take care of things in what terms? Like losing in the first round and getting his ass knocked out? <laughs> yes, that's exactly yes, what okay. I meant. God, we're on the same page. I was, I, was, I was throwing shade there. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.